This is the Lenovo Legion Go, a handheld gaming PC. And this category is very new, but I suspect it will grow significantly over the coming years. Currently, the landscape consists of the Steam Deck, ROG Ally, and of course, the OG Nintendo Switch. Each device takes a slightly different approach, and in my opinion, this Lenovo Legion Go is the best all-around machine right now. All right, let's begin with the physical design. After all, that is clearly the main selling point here. Flinking both sides of the 8.8 inch display, which is touch enabled. We have these Joy-Cons. And just like the Nintendo Switch, these are removable. You can detach both like so, and then you're essentially left with a Windows 11 tablet. It's not the thinnest thing ever because we do have solid performance, active cooling, the fan exhaust is right there, the intake is at the top half on the back. And we have a very thoughtfully designed kickstand with lots of different adjustments and it goes all the way to this rather extreme angle. To touch more on the display, the resolution here is fairly high, especially when compared to the rest of the category. So it's 2560 by 1600. The colors, fantastic. And the, the refresh rate is really special. It's 144 hertz. I previously reviewed the HP Evictus, which also has a beautiful 144 hertz display. And I'm at the point now that I can't not use a fast display. So I'm very happy that this has a 144 hertz display. And it's one of the key selling points. I have seen some people complain that this display is too big when compared to most of the category. But personally, I would love to see this display be even bigger in the future. I think a 10 inch display for this kind of a form factor would be absolutely perfect. It'll still be much smaller and portable than a 15 or even a 13 inch gaming laptop, but it would still be just big enough to properly use on a desk with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Right now at 8.8 .8 inches, it's possible, but I find myself wanting a laptop when using it in this format because the display, again, it's just a little bit too small. And even in handheld mode, I think a 10 inch display, so essentially that much bigger, would be completely fine and would allow for an even bigger battery. It's 49 watt hours and my battery test consisted of streaming 4K video and I got just over three hours. And that's not fantastic. If you're only doing web browsing, more light activities, it will last longer. But if you're gaming, doing stuff even more heavy, it's gonna be less. Now I'm a proud PC gamer. Uh, to me, a keyboard and mouse is clearly the way to go. So when I first got this, I mean, I appreciate the hardware. I mean, look how beautiful this device is. I'm truly a big fan of what they accomplished here. I just couldn't see myself using console controls like this in any meaningful capacity. So initially I thought that this device was for people that were coming over from a console to PC. They want to retain these controls, but you know, move on to a, a PC platform. But the more I use this device, the more I see its appeal. And that appeal, in my opinion, is the versatility. This thing is way more versatile than a standard gaming laptop. And allow me to demonstrate. So, of course, we have the handheld mode. This is fun. I wouldn't play a competitive FPS game like Overwatch in this mode. Although I did boot up old school Call of Duty Zombies, and playing it in this format was not only nostalgic, but a ton of fun. But this is just one option you have. Option two is to remove the Joy-Cons. They come off pretty easy. There's a button on the back that you push. And now we have the option to continue to use the Joy-Cons detached if you want. It works just fine. I don't notice any real detectable lag. It's fairly responsive. But the real advantage of this mode is when you activate the FPS vertical mouse configuration. So you switch on this mode on the bottom of the controller, you put it in the magnetic base, and just like that, we have a vertical mouse. And to my surprise, it does work shockingly well, and it's a ton of fun. I should also mention that the Joy-Cons themselves have extra buttons, and these can be programmed to do essentially whatever you want. And specifically to accommodate this mouse functionality, they have a second bumper. So the top one is the left click and the bottom is the right click. 
it feels super natural. So right click is to zoom and then the left is to, to shoot. It is a little bit awkward because the analog stick and these buttons are in your palm and you're constantly moving and clicking them, but they are disabled, so it's not it's not doing anything. And then option three is just to plug in a regular keyboard and mouse. We do retain this option. All you need is a regular USB-C hub. So you plug in the keyboard and mouse, plug it into the device like so, and that's it. Everything is working. So obviously as a PC gamer, this is by far my preferred method. And this feels completely natural. And I do appreciate how when you switch between console and PC inputs, the game automatically adapts. So you don't need to go into the settings and change all of the controls. Let's talk a bit more about the versatility because that's what this device is all about. So when it's being used in laptop mode, it's only a little bit worse than my actual gaming laptop. And that's only due to the smaller display and the hassle that is connecting a third party keyboard. But this can easily be fixed. I think they should take inspiration from tablets like the iPad that have a phenomenal first party keyboard attachment. If this Legion Go had some great built-in keyboard, much like the Magic Keyboard from Apple, it wouldn't only reduce the friction involved when setting up a, a desktop gaming situation, but it would also beautifully play into the flexibility this device is all about, giving you the option to game with traditional PC controls or console controls in truly any setting without being limited by hardware constraints. So if they did that, plus include a bigger display, roughly 10 inches, along with uh, an even faster, better chip in the next generation, then it would be very hard not to choose a device like this over a laptop. And my next video is going to be a direct comparison between this and what I'm calling one of the best budget gaming laptops in the market, the HP Victus. I have a lot to say, so make sure to subscribe for that video because I think these devices, maybe not yet, but eventually this could be the go-to mobile PC gaming platform, not laptops. And it seems like out of this entire category, so the Steam Deck OLED, the ROG Ally, the Lenovo Go is the only device that's trying to realize this future potential. Both the OLED and the ROG Ally seem to be kind of secondary accessories. They're cheaper, only $600, so they definitely have that budget appeal, but both of them have a much smaller display, roughly around seven inches. The Ally is only 1080p. It is 120 hertz, so close to the Legion Go, but the Steam Deck is only 90 hertz and the resolution is only 1280 by 800. So the Legion Go is by far the most capable device here. And if you compare these against mobile computing, because after all this does run full Windows 11, it's a complete PC, that's when you really begin to see the value that Lenovo is offering with the Legion Go. It's not perfect yet. I wouldn't replace my laptop with this because again, we don't have a built-in keyboard. The display is still a little bit too small. But if I had to guess, in five years time, this whole category is gonna converge on design that looks a lot more like what Lenovo is doing versus say Steam with the Steam Deck OLED. But let us know what you think in the comments below. If you wanna see more content on this device in the future, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.